Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Okay, um, today marks the start of our Tech Talk series, our assignment. Okay, um, I'm very happy to be the first one to be here as a sacrificial man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nevertheless, nevertheless, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to just go ahead with the assignment. Alright, my Tech Talk topic, why having a marine tank is worth the effort. First, before I carry on with the slides, let me introduce you my friend, Tyner. Alright, he's actually from the water of Sri Lanka. He's actually a trigger fish. They call it a blue line trigger fish. What I like about this fish is the eye. It's actually better than your supplier. Alright, with that, I'll carry on with my TED talk. Okay, <clears throat> in my mid-twenties, I always sign up myself for dive trip in the nearby region like Southeast Asia. And the reason why I do so because I enjoy underwater view a lot. Even if I have to dive in the same region for many, many times, I will always see surprises. Surprises like a school of fish just swim past you. Sharks just lying at the seabed motionlessly. And also, sometimes you will see beautiful rocks on the seabed, which you thought it may be harmless, but it's actually a stonefish, and this is actually the most venomous fish in the world, for your info. Okay, in the year 2006, I signed up for a diving trip to Bali. Okay, this was actually the furthest dive trip I ever went. During our last dive, me and my group mate descended into the ocean. At that time, we can sense the underwater current is actually building up. Well, for me, I'm actually the last to descend to the plank deck. I can see my group mate was actually holding on to the, to the reef in the midst of the current. Because I'm the last one, I'm actually at the back. And to me, I'm also starting to notice that I'm actually drifting away from them. Just imagine as you paddle, as you paddle forward, instead of moving in front, you're actually moving backwards. How would you feel? My anxiety grew. And I'm trying my best to make myself being noted by my mate. Because I'm going away from them. I bang on my oxygen tank, make noise, but they just couldn't notice me. Last, I decided to inflate my safety harness. I thank God that at least the depth that I was in wasn't too deep. So I managed to get myself surface up, uh, up to the surface and also I'm uh, not injuring myself. Okay, this was quite an experience for me. And because of what happened, that was actually my last dive. And what did I miss from, from the diving? I would say the dive trip, the, the coral reef, the beautiful coral reef, the colorful fishes that swim around. That is something that I missed. Then, I saw this article online. It's actually uh, titled Aquarium Deliver Significant Health Benefits. Quote from this doctor, Matthew. He's actually um, having an interview with BBC News. He said, Most people cannot see the different kind of fish because they do not dive. So, aquarium are a nice way to make the invisible marine environment just outside our door, visible and accessible. Well, I didn't want my dive trip set back to deter me from seeing the underwater world. Instead, five years later, after my last dive, in 2011, I decided to install a marine tank back at home. Well, after much discussion and consideration with my Minister of Home Affairs, 
for those who don't know, it's actually my wife. All right? I managed to obtain an approval from her on two conditions. First, when the tank is installed, it must be able to blend in with my house design. And at that time, my home design is actually rustic and cottage style. Second, the tank must not be dirty, smelly, or wet. I mean, as in causing the surrounding to be wet. Well, I believe I have done well. This picture was actually taken in Christmas, during Christmas in 2015, four years after the tank has been installed. Well, you look at it, house is clean, and the tank is actually the center of attraction for my living room. So all is good. Daily, I spend about 10 to 15 minutes enjoying this beautiful view of my coral reef at the comfort of my own home. At the same time, I will do my cleaning, cleaning of the surface of the glass using an LG cleaner. What about on a weekly basis? I will usually take about an hour to an hour and a half to do my maintenance. And this maintenance will include a 10% water change using a pre-mix um, water and also the cleaning of essential equipment that supports the tank. Keeping a marine tank is not easy. And I stress again, it's not easy. It requires a lot a lot of commitment and time. Like any amateur, when I got my tank, all I want is a tank filled with colorful corals, beautiful fish swimming in there. So I recall visiting my local fish shop and coral shop. All right, I will just go there, whatever that's beautiful, I'll just pack and bring back home stock it up. However, this way of um, stocking the tank has a major setback. All star wine and spirit owner installed a 650 gallon of fish, uh, fish tank in his store. This guy is the owner and this one is the 650 gallon fish tank. And his store is located at New York. The fish tank maker company make a tank that is able to dispense wine out of a tap that is extended out from the fish tank. And this is for customer who comes in who want to do wine tasting. It's very interesting. And this tank became the, set, the shop attraction, attracting customer into the shop. And that includes children. Okay, many children and wine doesn't mix. <laughs> yeah. But it did. Children came in to see the fish tank. This tank itself holds more than 65 types of fish. Okay. And, and okay, because of the number, it, it seems like it's very beautiful. As happy as one can be holding on to a glass of red wine, staring into the, this beautiful tank, the fishes was reported dead within the span of two months. And the owner took the blade because he thought he is having a big 650 gallons of tank and he should be able to support that amount of fishes. But he was wrong. The reason why the fishes was the fishes dead was due to the overstock of the tank in a short period of time. With the increase of fish, it actually increased the amount of fish waste which raised the toxin in the water. This is bad for the fish, especially when there's not enough bacteria to break down the waste. Just imagine yourself in a room, the pollution are slowly building up, the air pollution are slowly building up. You have an air purifier, but it's not strong enough to take away all this pollution. Eventually, the room will be filled with pollutants. How would you feel staying in this room? Do you, do you think you can survive <coughs> long in this room? That's how the fish is feeling. And that's why all the fish could not survive. A 
a new tank usually needs enough time for the bacteria to grow so that it can help to break down the fish waste. And it's recommended for owners to actually stock up the fish probably one or two every two weeks rather than 50 or 65 in one day. All right. Well, these are some of the reasons, um, some of the lessons learned for me especially and it's a hard and expensive way. All right. And also, as beautiful as fish may be, they may not be peaceful and they may not enjoy a community living with other species in a confined environment. I remember this once. I saw this beautiful gold bar ras and this orange line trigger fish. They were so beautiful swimming in the tank, actively. And by doing so, it's a sign that these two species are very healthy. So, without thinking twice, I approached the owner, I said, pack it up, I bring back home, do whatever I need to do, and I release the, tank, the, the two fish into my tank. They were very happily swimming in the tank. As they passed, I realized my fish count start to drop. It reduces. And eventually, I'm left with these two beauty queens in the tank. <laughs> I didn't know what happened. I thought about it. I did my research. And I realized, oh dear, these two beauty is actually beauty from the outside, but not from the inside. They are actually very aggressive fish and very territorial. They are not suitable for the peaceful community. In fact, they are the big bully in the tank. Eventually, I have to give away these two fish to someone with a bigger and more aggressive community. <laughs> well, through this incident, I realized that in order to sustain a beautiful reef tank, one should not only look at the physical appearance. Sound familiar? Okay. <laughs> but we must also look at the in inside. We must look at is their personality, whether they are temperament, whether they are aggressive towards the other fish. And this doesn't just apply to the fish. It applies to the corals too. Different corals have different requirements, such as sunlight and also the amount of wave that's required to help them to um, to survive. All right. Some of them need a bigger. Some of them need a bigger space as they can. Left. Left. Okay. Therefore, like the okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay. Some need a bigger space as they can damage the neighboring coral should they overgrow them. Therefore, the fishes and corals have a specific requirement to survive. And once you have read to read out, to find out more before acquiring them, if not otherwise we have to face the consequence. Well, we know about the hassle. Now let's talk about the benefits. <laughs> okay, not sure if you guys share the same experience as me. Well, just imagine having a tank with all the fish swimming inside lots of fish, and the coral is sway, swaying according to how the wave is orchestrating. It's just very relieving, and it just relieves me of all my stress and burden for my day of work. Research has shown that watching fish in the aquarium can lower stress level, decrease your blood pressure, and also reduce insomnia. You probably have noticed that some office and hospital having custom make aquarium and they are often placed there to lower the stress level. So can you imagine where I am sleeping last night? <laughs> okay. The tank is also act, act, act as a conversational piece for the visitors and family. My parents used to visit me and ask me, how's my work? When are you going to have a toddler? I'll tell my dad, hey, I have a lot of fish babies at home. <laughs> All right? And in fact, the tank also drew my dad's interest, and he actually have an archive of the fish picture in his Facebook. I mean, all my fish 
all my fishes. Mm -hmm. And whenever my siblings actually visit, my parents will probably explain my marine tank to them. <laughs> surprise, surprise, I think everyone would love surprises. My tank will never fail to surprise me whenever I look into the tank. Okay, I recall I bought this Christmas brass. It's very beautiful, colorful, and rare. Very peaceful also. <laughs> Not knowing its sleeping habit, I actually released it into the tank. But the moment I released it, second later, I couldn't find it. I searched for it. Day after day, I just couldn't see it. So my verdict, I have bought an unhealthy specimen and the Christmas rust probably have died due to transportation stress. And this is very common because if the fish are not packed properly and not um, packed properly and during transportation, they will be stressed and they will die. So I take it as it is. A month later, while I was enjoying the beauty of my tank, I noticed something at the corner popping out from the sand bed. And I shouted, hey, my Christmas rust is alive! <laughs> Guess what? It turned out that the Christmas rust is actually one of those that actually bury into the sand bed and hide there when they are stressed or when they are sleeping at night. And that explained the disappearing act the first time when I release it. So they will stay buried until they feel at ease and safe to be in the open. And of course, as I continue, my passion for this hobby, I learned more about marine life and how different creatures engage each other to maintain their own ecosystem. Sometimes I wonder why God created marine creatures so different from human beings. Okay. Have you guys watched Finding Nemo before? Yes. Yeah, I'm sure you guys have. Do you know that this, mo this movie was one of those that triggers an uprise of interest for marine aquarium at home? The fish in the movie is known as the clownfish. And do you know that the clownfish are born, are all born male? Yes, they are. And eventually, one of the strongest, fiercest, and usually the biggest will emerge and turn into a female. Talks about wearing pants at home, yeah? <laughs> to elaborate further on the relationship between the different creatures, the bait that we usually see them cuddling comfortably is actually called the anemone. They have actually uh, this mutual relationship between one another that no other fish can have with the anemone. The clownfish will, the clownfish will bring food to the anemone, while the anemone will protect the clownfish from any predators. Okay, there are also opportunities where the clownfish had to protect the anemone from their um, so-called predators. Okay. So, as we read further, you will find that there are many, many more of such relationships, which I have explained earlier also during the lessons, that actually happen in this marine environment. Just imagine, if you have a marine tank at home, you can observe this relationship, this behavior at the comfort of your own home. So, after coming a long way with all the challenges and benefits of keeping a marine tank, I have experienced the joy to see my fish and coral growing strength to strength. When I look back, I often wonder if taking a huge risk of setting up a marine tank would be disastrous. Well, I leave you, my audience, to decide with this last picture of my new home if I just moved in last year. Thank you. <laughs>